Hello, everyone. I am Solomon from Blockmatics, and I'm here today with Joseph Ryan, aka Joey. Um, I guess you guys are from from New Orleans, yep. um, and so we're here with with Joey from Gilded, Gilded Finance, uh, talking about crypto accounting. So this is gets. Um, I mean, as it is, tracking your crypto is hard enough. Like we do a lot on sort of the tax side of things. So. Um, just knowing your buys and sells, that's always been a big issue, but now you're sort of multiplying that times two or exponentially where you're trying to do your, essentially your buys and sells or your uh, payments and receivables, but you also need to now track that to your traditional invoicing, know who, who you're paying and for what, what that is. So um, I guess before we get started, I, so I know you come from, so you're the co-founder of Gilded, yep. you're the CFO. Yep. Um, how did how did you end up there? And yeah, what's, so, uh, how did uh, that get started? We, uh, yeah, very interesting story. So I was in public accounting for 10 years, did my uh, did my, did my service there, and uh, went down the crypto blockchain rabbit hole about uh, two, two and a half years ago, right before the lead up into 2017. Um, when you know back back when the ASCPA was telling everybody that crypto and blockchain is going to take over everybody's job, so I was like, oh, I guess I, guess I should learn about this stuff. You, you know, like listen exactly. So I listened, went down the rabbit hole, and uh, ended up here at Gilded. So that's that's how I get that's how I got here. Sweet. And when did uh, when did Gilded start? So we're about six months old. Um, yeah, everybody's right, been on board for about yeah uh, the last four months. Um, we got a really good team together. Uh, we, we're all from New Orleans, and uh, you know we're we're trying to take over the crypto accounting space yeah. in terms of uh, we know where the holes are. We know where people are struggling. Um, we've seen firsthand, uh, you know, many different audit firms that are working mm -hmm. in this space that have clients that are, are really really struggling and uh, really uh, spending a, a, a number of inordinate amount of hours on their crypto accounting. So we're here to solve those problems. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, well, number one, you've come a really long way because even just using your app, it's just really impressive what you guys uh, put together so so quickly, which is pretty amazing. And then um, you're saying in terms of filling those holes, is there, I mean, you don't have to name names, but are there other companies doing it? Because I haven't seen yeah, others. It's a, that, yeah. Right now in the blockchain crypto space, it's definitely a race. Yeah. Not just with uh, accounting, but I think there's a lot of smart people that are getting in the space right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is going to be my plug for crypto in general. If you just follow uh, people that are leaving banking, people that are leaving you know high high up uh, tech jobs, mm -hmm. and are getting into the crypto blockchain space, you'll see that there's a lot of smart people that are conglomerated around the space right now. Right. And when you get a lot of smart people in one room, it, it tends to be a pretty good outcomes. So. All right. um, pretty as as Paul would say, long Bitcoin right now. Long Bitcoin. So. Yeah. All right. So let's let's get into it. I guess um, so. For this webinar, we're going to have a discussion in terms of what those holes or what those problems Gilded is is tackling. Um, so we're going to go through five issues. Uh, let me actually just share a little bit of what we're going to cover. And so, I mean, the first. First thing is, just in terms of the clarity around, you know, there's like this lack of guidance around crypto in general, right? So obviously I mentioned just in terms of tax treatment, which obviously flows directly into your accounting treatment. I mean, those two things are tightly linked. So what is what do we know so far? What has the SEC been saying recently about crypto and um, kind of what are some of that still those murky areas? Yeah, exactly. So right now, just overall in, that, in this space, uh, the SEC, the FASB, and, and the accounting firms in general are all kind of you know, pointing fingers at, hey, where are we going to get guidance? Who's coming out yeah. with what? Who's doing what? So uh, right now, from from um, you know talking with some people, I think the SEC definitely understands crypto and blockchain a lot mm -hmm. more than a lot of people probably give them credit for. Okay. Um, I think they, they have their arms around what's going on in the space. Um, I think they're just trying to now develop a framework for mm -hmm. for how this is going to work, uh, which is which is very very difficult when this is you know the first time in the history of mankind <laughs> that we have digital assets. So right. um, at least you know knowing knowing that they know what's going on uh, is probably a good step in the right direction. 
and send it back. I mean, eventually, you know, yeah, they, they exactly. it took time. Exactly. Yeah. Took, took them long enough, but hey, they got there. Uh, but they did recently, within the last two, two and a half weeks, release two, two big uh, papers that just came out. One's the framework for investment contract analysis of digital assets. Uh, and that actually is a framework around determining, uh, giving some clarity around if you issue an ICO, if it falls within the securities, uh, U.S. securities uh, federal law. Mm -hmm. So there in that, in that application, they're applying the, the Howey test, which we know is uh, <clears throat> the investment of money. The, the three prongs are investment of money, uh, common enterprise, and then a reasonable expectation of profits derived from the effects of others. So having to apply that test around ICOs, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, you know, the first two are, are pretty straightforward. You know, a lot of people aren't really having to decipher any meanings involved with those two prongs. The third prong, though, definitely is still a little murky. Uh, when you have terms such as active participants determining what that exactly means, who is an active participant, who okay. is, you know, associated with that to then, you know, expect to drive profits, it's still a little murky. But at least again, they've provided some framework there. Gotcha. So again, um, the third term is around having representative um, represent representatives manage the interests of different participants. Was that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So just determining who actually falls in that active participant bucket okay. uh, is a little murky. And there's there's some other terminology within that that third structure mm -hmm. that people are struggling to grasp as to hey, this could mean. You know, X, Y, and Z really falls into this when in other situations it's it's totally outside that realm. So it's still a little murky, but everybody's excited that hey, at least there's something out there that we can start with, and uh, you know we can start building around that. The other uh, piece of guidance that was issued, or I should say, uh, letter that was issued, is, was the no action letter that was taken against or for in this case Turnkey Jets. Okay. Uh, Turnkey Jets is a private commercial charter jet service. Okay. And they ICO back in the ICO craze, and they now have tokens that they issue to uh, their members in their system, where the members can exchange the tokens for loyalty, you know, basically loyalty rewards point system, and they can exchange those tokens for uh, private, you know, actually jet services. So the SEC said, okay, we're actually you're, and this is the first company that they have not taken uh, action against, where they've said all the other ICOs. ICOs falls in within securities right. laws. This is the first company where they have not taken any action against them saying, okay, you actually fall outside the SEC securities guidance. Mm -hmm. And as long as, you know, condition X, Y, and Z are met, which is basically that it's a utility token being redeemed for points, right. it can only be redeemed within mm -hmm. turnkey. Is, is this kind of giving also, um, I guess, validation to this whole notion, the fact that being a utility token sort of isolates you and makes that I, I guess, um, you know, it makes you more secure in terms of not being considered to have issued a security because that has general, always been the rhetoric. Like, okay, it's a security, to, it's a yeah. utility token, you're in the clear, yeah. but there have always been, I believe, accountants and lawyers say like, we don't actually even know, we're just making that assumption. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so there, you know, there has been an assumption and this is the first time the SEC has actually said, okay, you fall outside the scope of Gotcha. Uh, securities, uh, securities law. So hmm. again, uh, I'd say chalk that up another win in the crypto uh, right. crypto world. And again, these are these are at least some frameworks that we can now build upon mm -hmm. and know that okay, we have some sort of a roadmap <laughs> that gotcha. we can now follow. We're not totally in the blind. Um, right. So again, some a couple of wins in the crypto world, at least from the SEC side. And how, how does this kind of um, Influence like the when you, the way you think about what Gilded is doing and how you're managing people's um, crypto and invoicing in terms of how do these issues come into play and maybe not just with SEC but you mentioned also FASB exactly. which is the Financial Accounting Standards, Standards Board. Yep. Board. Okay, exactly. Um, yeah. So how is you know things that they've said or not said kind of exactly? Influence? So it's a it's a trickle down effect. Uh, the FASB kind of you know was waiting for the SEC to to determine uh, clarity and guidance in that area. Mm -hmm. So as the SEC is now starting to, to give us some clarity, the FASB then says, okay, now we can issue some accounting principles around digital assets. Mm -hmm. um, so the FASB you know, now probably can start, hopefully, everybody's waiting, provide more, uh, or I should say additional framework around how to classify digital assets. Okay. Uh, they had, you know, back in 2014, 
uh, initially said, okay, crypto assets are going to be recorded as intangible uh, lived assets, but they have not updated that guidance. And as we all know, since 2014, mm -hmm. there's been a lot going on in the space. Yeah. Uh, so what, what, would that, what does that mean, intangible lived assets? Yeah, so that's basically for reporting purposes, you're going to be putting your crypto asset, you're going to be recording it on the balance sheet as a uh, intangible asset. So it sits on your balance sheet um, and is not going to be a uh, fair market or mark to market, you just would write down any sort of impairment on the asset based mm -hmm. on uh, at the end of your reporting period. That was the general guidance that was okay. that was released. Uh, there's the, uh, I'd say the big four and other accounting firms uh, over the last few years have issued white papers and guidance saying, hey, if nobody's, if we're not getting any clarity from the AICPA mm -hmm. and FASB as to how we really should be recording these new uh, tokens and cryptocurrencies that are being released, uh, we think it, you know, to make to make sense to the to the user, to the reader of the financials, we're going to kind of take a leap forward and say they should be classified as X, Y, Z. So I know PwC has recently come out and basically given four uh, categories or buckets that right. they say uh, cryptos can be, you know, can be gotcha. classified as based on the characteristics around them. So right, so maybe what's happening is like that now the SEC is just following what the big four are saying. Yeah, it like could, it, how yeah it goes exactly. Reverse exactly. Because like be they don't, you know, the fact is. These big accounting firms have more manpower and brain power and or and well maybe I shouldn't say that more man collectively right. you, know, you just have more right. people looking at this and probably more resources as well exactly so I mean maybe that even what happened with the whole you know the idea of this security token if everybody exactly. is calling it or utility token rather everybody is saying that then the SEC would be like okay that makes sense for us too yeah exactly so. exactly so I think uh, you know seeing seeing kind of everybody working around this guidance in the space the SEC FASB as long as as well as you know kind of firms working closely with the SEC and FASB gotcha. uh, to help kind of mold these frameworks is what we're seeing coming down the pipeline so yeah so let's uh, talk about I guess kind of the the uh, main issues that you know that that Gilded is solving with with respect to I mean now now that you have this guidance or try to understand what these things are legally um, we're still in this bind in terms of how you're actually tracking transactions right so um, yeah so let's let's yeah, talk so, about so that. So getting into the, 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 the here, yeah this this is the fun accounting stuff so. Uh, I'd say obviously the first headache it goes back to guidance. The second headache is going to actually be tracking these transactions. Uh, so we know that you know basically uh, transactions record on the blockchain, and in order to verify your your transaction that has actually occurred, you need to go out to the blockchain, uh, download the transaction, and you know put you're putting all this information within the spreadsheet. So any sort of crypto transaction that you have, personal or business. Mm -hmm. um, you're either using you know exchanges to get your exchange information. Right. Uh, if you have wallets where you're doing uh, transfers between wallets, you have to track those. So right now, just tracking the transaction flow between uh, all your accounts that you may have set up is definitely a nightmare. Um, and having to basically dump all those into a spreadsheet and, and manually uh, you know, record each in and out right. is what's creating a lot of time right now. And, yeah. Um, so I guess the best that you can do up to this point is let's say if you had let's say a Coinbase account as your business account, and then you are very vigilant in doing everything through Coinbase, then I guess technically you can get a list of all those transactions. Of course, you don't have the accounting side of what those transactions are for, but I guess the main thing is, and we'll we'll show this later in the app, is that. If you're doing anything outside that one little environment, exactly. it doesn't, you know, you can't exactly. import some other crypto yep. account into your Coinbase. Yeah, so if you have Coinbase and then you set up a Binance account or you just have a separate wallet, anything right. like that, wallet. you got to take all those transactions, uh, all those all those spreadsheets that the, or CSV exports that those right. exchanges will give you, be able to basically dump them into one spreadsheet or one, one database or query, kind yeah. of sort them. And then you have to go back and figure out, oh, what was this transaction for? Was this a trade? Mm. Did I actually send this? Was this you know Bitcoin that I sent to a vendor? Right. Uh, was this ETH that you know somebody paid me uh, ETH or whatever, you know, whatever right. it may be? So then you have to figure out what it was actually for. Then you take the time of all right. Once you figure out what the transaction was for, you have to figure out how to record that transaction. So manually recording that entry and saying, okay, this was a payment to a vendor. Now I need to create the entry within QuickBooks. 
uh, or, or zero, whichever kind of system yeah. you use, and literally manually typing in the entry within the system. And you know, anytime yeah. you have to use the word manual more than once, nobody's ever. Yeah. For sure. And and I, I should say, like, it, you know, I would say most companies, they have to do stuff outside of an exchange because a, a lot of uh, blockchain businesses or, or companies that are using crypto, they would want to keep most of their holdings in some kind of multi-sig account um, or they, you know, they want to hold it off exchange. They want to keep it on a hardware wallet, a ledger. So once you're dealing with uh, something that's on a ledger, then obviously you need, you know, be back to the spreadsheet scenario where exactly, you're trying to exactly. merge said, together. Yeah, exactly. As you said, most businesses want, uh, you know, their crypto holdings stored off, off exchanges for security right. and, and control purposes. You want to have it stored within wallets. Obviously, if you're, if you're talking millions yeah. of dollars, uh, of crypto that you may be holding, if you're using it as a as a cash account, right. you want that secured within a, a cold storage wallet offline with a, you know 100 security around it. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then I guess this kind of leads us into our our next topic of not just tracking the transactions, but then you know th this is stuff that exchanges give you again for the stuff that is on the exchange itself, but you know, if, if just in general, uh, tracking your cost bases and your, your gains and losses. So. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that goes into the whole spreadsheet <laughs> build out. Yeah. Um, you know, once you have your transactions within your spreadsheet, uh, and and as as everybody knows, you, you have a when you make a payment in uh, any crypto Bitcoin, you know, any 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 crypto there is out there, that triggers a taxable event, which uh, if they're classifying uh, cryptocurrency as property, meaning the second that you, or if you think of it as a security, the second that you pay or trade that security, if you're going coin to coin, or you know, buying a whole cup of coffee or pizza scenario, the second that transaction occurs, it triggers a gain or loss on that Bitcoin ETH that you sold. Yeah. So how do you determine what your cost basis was for that Bitcoin that you had bought you know, four months ago, five months ago, however long it was, or right. it could have been or an hour some, ago. Right, or it could be a, it, it, something that you got as a payment from someone exactly. else. It could have been some, a payment that you got from somebody else. So determining mm -hmm. what your cost basis was at that point in time, obviously, and, and determining which method you're going to use for how you're going you're gonna to remove that uh, inventoryable Bitcoin or crypto off you your mean, books. Like, so, a, like a LIFO or FIFO? Exactly. Or so yeah. if we if we go LIFO basis, which is last in first out, meaning mm -hmm. you know the last Bitcoin that you received is going to be the first yeah. one that, that comes out in your payment, or FIFO, which is first in first out, so the, the very first Bitcoin that you received is that is actually going to be considered what the cost basis was for your payment. So having to basically calculate what your cost basis was for that transaction based upon your like I said, the inventoryable units yeah. and saying, oh, uh, I received you know this one Bitcoin a month ago. Uh, the cost basis was a thousand dollars. But where it gets really tricky is, you know, if you send three Bitcoin to vendor X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. and you have to go through four or five transactions where you could have received micro, you know, half right. a Bitcoin, a quarter of a Bitcoin. So your cost basis is, you know, adds yeah, up I mean, to that's, that's six, impossible. seven, that's eight. I mean, you could be, yeah, you could you be can't adding do that up manually. ten transactions just to determine what the actual average, you know, right. cost basis was for each one. So again, yeah, that, that just insane. sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that that would probably be that that alone would, if they have to do that manually without a software, you know, without Gilded, that would. I mean, exactly. essentially turn people off from using crypto altogether. Exactly. It's like exactly. this whole notion of like that you have to, every time you spend or like buy a cup of coffee, like you say, I now need to figure out that co coffee costs $3. So I'm spending $3 worth of crypto, but I bought that crypto at cost me $2 yeah. to get the crypto. Yeah. And now I'm paying tax on that dollar gain. Exactly. It just, exactly. It's yeah. It's, it's not fun. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people that are just like it's not even worth my time. Right? Like why? Why? Why would I go through the headache of spending hours upon hours at the yeah. end of every week, month, whatever yeah. it may be, to just get uh, you know it may be micro micro transactions on their right. books, um, you know, depending upon the number of transactions they have going flowing through each month. You know, a company that has ten mm -hmm. transactions for maybe a hundred bucks, 
Yeah. They're probably like, this isn't even worth my time. Uh, right. Why Why am I even accepting crypto? Why am I even trying to track it? It's not worth my time. I can't blame them. Yeah. Yeah. And how uh, uh, does this tie back into guess what we were saying at the very beginning in terms of how the SEC or maybe potentially the IRS is treating crypto? I mean, the fact that it is now um, you do have to calculate your cost basis on every single spend, yeah. like yeah. potentially that those rules can change. Exactly. Right? Exactly. In, in my mind, my my hopeful vision of the world. Yeah. yeah. Tw- you know, twenty years from now. Or- Five years from now, I should say. Yeah. Uh, let's make it sooner, please. Is that you might have the, to go into the IRS? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm still knocking, yeah. knocking on doors and uh, giving my my spiel. So yeah. what I see is is basically that crypto will be divided into you know X number of buckets. Let's just say let's just say it's four. You have uh, cur- yeah, actual currency, legal tender, um, asset backed uh, crypto. Uh, you have your security uh, type crypto, and then your your utility tokens, and then you know they, you give a definition that if you meet a certain amount of these characteristics, you fall into this bucket. And if you sure. fall into this bucket, that leads to recording, you know, the accounting guidance and recording it, mm-hmm. you know, as whatever it may be. If it's you record it like a security, you record it like cash, you record it as an indefinite, intangible lived asset, sure. et cetera, et cetera. You know, based upon those buckets. That would that is what makes the most sense, I think, to a lot of accountants in the world right now. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of people are hoping that it goes that way. And then again, if you spend what's what's considered a currency, you're not having to worry about the whole game loss issue. Gotcha. Um, let me ask you, like, well, maybe this this is related to this with cost basis. This might be a more advanced topic, and I'm not sure how you guys to handle handle it. But I've noticed in your app, you also are listing. Or there's an option to track a certain transaction as being an airdrop. Yeah. So let's say I don't know there's some I don't know OMG tokens that show up in my wallet, yes. um, and then I'm use which I just got for free, yes. and then I you can use that to spend. Like yes. how do you um, deal so, with that? Yeah, that's like, that's what? a little fuzzy as well. At least in the guidance. Yeah. Um, I've seen where people are considering airdrops. Or even um, splits of, or, uh, sorry, of like ERC, ETH to uh, ETH Classic, you know, those kind of splits where uh-huh. they're saying, okay, well, you're given, hey, you now, you had 100 ETH, now you have 100 ETC. Gotcha. Uh, so when you're when you're given that, some people are saying, whoa, I don't want to be recording 100 ETC yeah. on my books all of a sudden. So some people are treating that as, well, until I actually, have access what determines access to that etc That's thing. Yeah. until i actually spend that etc is it almost like authorized etc and i don't put it on mm-hmm. all of my books until i actually start spending it or moving it around or trying right. it for tokens um so that's a little bit of a fuzzy area as well uh, okay. which again leads to more accounting numbers <laughs> right um so well yeah maybe you're not yet at the stage where like if somebody so, but in the app, like if somebody were to select the transaction as an airdrop, is that currently would be handled? Yeah, so that would be something where we would be able to journalize that. I see. On the specific That's user, amazing. user entry. Yeah. All right, fantastic. So I guess very related to figuring out your cost basis is also really just knowing in the first place what your what the spot price is for every transaction. So how do you, how do you handle that? Exactly. So uh, we'll, we'll be demonstrating this as well when we get to the to the uh, demonstration of what we have uh, to come it out. But yeah, again, that goes back to every single transaction that you're putting in your spreadsheet to mm-hmm. track and be able to record into your accounting system. You have to determine what the historical spot price was at that point in time when the transaction right. occurred. That leads to a whole, you know, you may you may be on Binance and you may have traded uh, ETH for Bitcoin on February yeah. 1st at 9 a.m. And that transaction price may that spot price of the Bitcoin you received may have been thousand dollars. Yeah. Whereas you could have made that same uh, coin for coin trade on um, uh, like you know, the, 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 the some exchange. other exchange, yeah, Bitrex or Bitrex, yes, yeah. throwing throw names out there. Bitrex uh, on February first at nine a.m. and you know it could have been uh, eleven or one thousand you know two hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars. Right. So if you you know you're going to have fluctuations between different exchanges as well as uh, any other kind of wallet to wallet transactions right. where it's recorded you know if it's recorded with an ether scan if you're just doing a wallet to wallet transaction and determine what the price was yeah in US in in fiat so there's a lot of variability there there are sites out there like crypto compare 
or they take an aggregate of more of the reputable exchanges mm -hmm. um, and come up with their own, we'll say, average, average right. uh, spot price. You can get daily, hourly, weekly, monthly spot price, uh, and I believe even down to the minute. Don't put me on that, but right. close down to the minute, I want to say. So if you yeah. have the exact accuracy of you know that 9.01 a.m. Right. spot price, again, very different than... So you're using Crypto Compare yes. for, so for the app. Long story short, it yeah. uses Crypto Compare to determine what the historical spot price was. Gotcha. Instead of, again, if you're manually doing this, you have to go out to Crypto Compare. You have to go to your exchange and determine, okay, my spot price at this point in time was yeah. $1,000. $1, um, so that's the spot price that I use. But again, how do you know that's that's accurate just because it says on, on that one mm -hmm. exchange that how do you know it's not a, you know, a different spot price across the world? Right. And I, in addition to that, like just also correct me if, if I'm wrong with this part, but I think I've heard you, uh, someone a guild that say that if you send an invoice to someone, let's say for $150 and they pay you with one ETH and that satisfies the invoice, does that then make the spot price as being 150? No, yeah, so you know when you invoice a customer, you invoice you, uh, on our system. You can invoice in in USD and say, okay, um, pay me in pay me in ETH. It was hundred USD. Uh -huh. So you send the invoice. The user receives it. It's hundred hundred USD. If the person then a day later goes in and pays it with ETH, it automatically converts the the spot price of what hundred USD uh -huh. is at that point in time to what it is in ETH. And okay. sends you that amount of ETH at that point in time at the, that, at the time that time they're paying that the yes, okay. correct that the that the individual is paying the invoice. Gotcha. Okay, so that makes sense. So I, I guess I misspoke a bit. I wasn't quite right what I said before. Um, yeah. So let's just also I guess again to uh, I guess you know now we have the spot price. We're tracking these transactions. We have the cost basis and. And now this all kind of ties together exactly. to, to what exactly. yeah. So yeah, accounting systems, traditional accounting systems not supported nope. crypto, uh, which is which is the main issue I'd say in this whole this yeah. whole uh, webinar. So again, you're having to do this on spreadsheets. You're having to do this basically off the books, and then take all of your off the books work and manually import journal entry by journal entry mm -hmm. those transactions into your existing accounting system. So. That's where Gilded comes into play. That's where we're going to save hours upon hours upon hours of work. Um, yeah. I think we calculated it probably takes roughly a, a, uh, a bookkeeper about five minutes to record a crypto transaction. Kind of once you have your, your spreadsheet system set up the way you yeah. like it, you have all your sales calculating the way you like it. So that front end time of kind of setting up your, your spreadsheet takes five minutes, uh, about five minutes to, to record it within your spreadsheet, the transaction, and then to, to then take that transaction, create a journal entry, and then input that journal entry into your accounting books. It takes about five minutes. So if you have 100 transactions a month, yeah. 50 transactions a month, uh, you're talking about hours, and then we, we roughly calculated, if you have about 160 transactions a month, which for businesses is probably uh -huh. crypto transactions, Pretty reasonable if you're, if right. you're doing a, a pretty good sized business. If you have 160 crypto transactions a month, that leads to a whole month spent in a, an entire year just reconciling your crypto transactions and getting them in your books. Right. So pretty much the more crypto transactions you do, the more you have to hire someone. Exactly. To manage. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So of course people be like, why would I want to do that? Exactly. But but if I say to you, Joey, but hey, like I got all this, I have tons of stuff already tracked in Coinbase. Yep. What do I do now? Do I have to copy over all my Coinbase transactions? Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is where Gilded's going to come and play, and where we're going to save all those hours and those headaches that accountants yeah. are, are having issues with. So we, in a nutshell, we take all of your transactions from your wallets, from your exchanges. Uh, you link up, you link up all your accounts, dump them into our into our fully you know UI, great UI effects right. system where you can start categorizing these transactions. You can start labeling wallets. So you're not looking at huge long addresses right. with zeros and X's and Y's and being like, who did who I send that? that to? Who is that? You Very can actually cool. tag that as a vendor or you know, if there's a payment made to, to a customer, you can tag that. So now you, can, you start out data that actually mm -hmm. makes sense. Then yeah. you can start labeling those transactions. Oh, this was consulting expense. This was legal expense. 
This was revenue from a customer. You know, this was a purchase of a vehicle, that kind of thing. You can start labeling those transactions. Like, like any, yeah, like, like accounting right, like software any accounting should software. do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, you'll be able to take those transactions and sync them right into your QuickBooks. Or zero or any other accounting system that, that we're using. Right. Awesome. So I think now that we covered kind of the, the basis, well, so I, I guess on that point though, so with Coinbase, do you, you already have an integration with? So or that's coming currently, so? yeah. So at, if, if anybody is on the site right now, we currently ex, uh, just support wallet addresses. Right. We are very close, about a week out from having about a dozen or so exchanges. Oh, it does you're putting it early. Yeah, we'll okay. have the top, you know, Coinbase, Bitrex, Bitfinex exchanges in there. That's awesome. Um, we're finishing up that API integration right now. So you'll be able to take your exchange account, just just it'll just uh, log in your exchange account and download all your transactions from your exchanges. You log in your wallets, you wait all of your transactions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, into one nice uh, data ready uh, format, and then you can start tagging. And when you start tagging, you start labeling, um, you know, and, and being able to determine where all of your transactions went, where right. coming in and outgoing. Now the special sauce that we're that we're really uh, pushing is. This summer, we're expecting to have our beta release out where we will automatically take those transactions that you live mm -hmm. on our system and it will sync right into your QuickBooks or Zero account. So it'll create those journal entries yeah. and then sync them right into your accounting system. So when you log into your QuickBooks or Zero, yeah. it's our, those transactions are already recorded within each within each general ledger account. So think of it as Bill.com. When right. you go uh, pay an invoice, uh, through bill.com, you're going to log into the system, you're going to categorize and load your transactions, you hit confirm. Once you hit confirm, uh, it automatically syncs into your QuickBooks and Zero account. And you don't even, when you log into QuickBooks and Zero, you don't have to confirm those transactions. They're That's automatically right. right into the ledger. So. That's amazing. Wow. Super cool. Yeah. Kind, kind of makes me now want to use QuickBooks <laughs> even more because right. I'm like, exactly. I got to get them all synced sync together. Exactly. So it's super cool. Yes, yeah, so I think we've uh, we've kept the uh, everyone waiting long enough. Let's actually show show this app. Um, yeah, so you can actually just see this. It's not just theoretical. Right. It, 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 it is. It all uh, exists. It is live. Yeah. Awesome. So oops, I'm gonna just share my whole screen. So I'm gonna just jump right into the. Let's just make sure that's coming through. Yeah. So I'm just gonna jump right into showing the app itself, because I've already loaded some account, but obviously you just go to gilded.finance, yep. the website, and then you can, it pops you into this uh, once you create an account. Yeah, and yeah. create an account, super easy, enter an email address, um, yeah. you know, very easy to sign up. Right, so I do have, like when you do create an account, I obviously I added over here, this is my activity, I added one uh, Ethereum account, so yep. if I go to my account page, I have it over here, and yep. I just have my own label, yep. but of course, I could copy the address or you know look look it up somewhere else. I guess, exactly. But I can add another account. So I'll, I'll actually, just for illustration purposes, I'll do here. I have some second account. I'm gonna add that in. So this is like an Ethereum account. Um, I'll just do account two. And I'll actually look up. So if I, if I look at this second account on Etherscan, I just want to see, I think I have maybe one or two transactions in here from a really long time ago. Uh, I'm going to look at this transaction here. I just want to copy the transaction hash because when I go back to the Gilded app, if I look at my activity, so it's loading in yep. the transactions from there or, or collating them together. So if I search, for that transaction, or maybe it didn't pull in yet. So, so I don't know. This uh, I've had had I had it sometime take some time to pull up. Yeah, let me see now. Well, I guess yeah, that it should part be. Didn't, yeah, it should be. Maybe because it's all the way on the bottom. Yeah, it could, well, it just could be loading. I know our. Yeah, our devs are working furiously right now. So. Okay. So, no, and I know I've I've done this just before with actually loading a second account and then searching for it and it shows up. So, um, yeah. So, the, so just like in general, searching you can search by a transaction hash. I'll show you that. Um, 
you know, that transaction itself. I can just search for, let's say, ETH transactions versus, uh, I have, I think, some OMG ones in here, yep. which I think is super cool. On each transaction itself, um, it allow, obviously, you have these details, um, and you can click on Block Explorer, which is super cool that it sends you yeah, right, right into uh, Etherscan itself, so you can get some other info as well. And currently, the tokens we do support are all Ethereum and ERC20 tokens, mm -hmm. uh, including MakerDAO. We're big fans of MakerDAO and uh, what they're building over there in that community. Awesome. We are very, very Same close here. Big, to, yeah, MakerDAO, yeah. for sure. Uh, we are very close to having Bitcoin support. All you Bitcoin people out there that are waiting on that, uh, our CTO is furiously getting that finalized, hopefully ready okay. to launch in production um, very soon. I don't want to give a specific timeline, but very mm -hmm. soon. So we will have Bitcoin support on here as well. Uh, awesome. which, and, and, then, and then we'll be adding more tokens as we, as we go along too. Gotcha. Sweet. Um, yeah, and then here's like the, I mean, obviously I showed you the account side. Obviously, you can. I could just. And, and within this accounts, accounts page is where we'll have you'll be able to enter your exchange accounts as well. Gotcha. Sweet. Well, I did see that currently. Well, I guess it's not yet set up. Is that you have under integrations? There is uh, a sync yep. with Coinbase. So are you saying that this is not? It's, it's not, not live yet. No, and it will be shortly. Yes. Yeah, and the same goes for anyone that currently use BitPay for their yep. for their merchant account yep. activity. Um, that that as well can be synced up. Um, all right, so the, the send and request, and this is really like the coolest part of this app is, and it's something we didn't actually talk about before, but if you create, you can obviously send a payment. Yes. I actually want to show the request the payment side of things um, where I'm actually, so I've set up before adding a new contact. I'll just show that before it's just, very straightforward. We put in their name, their address of that contact e email. So, and of course, it keeps those clients yep. listed. Yep. So, I want to request the payment from my client too. And you have integration <laughs> with the request network. Yep. So, the request network is a, is a decentralized network that uses the Ethereum blockchain for keeping track of the transactions that are being made. Yep. But more importantly, it also holds all the invoices in a decentralized way using yep. um, distributed file uh, IPFS. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So, so it yep. basically stamps the invoice on the blockchain. Which is really incredible. Yep. So I mean, what, what that means is effectively that that invoice um, is not just contained, you know, within Gilded. It's something that can be yep. viewed and shared. Yep. Also, obviously, there's more info or metadata that you're holding in Gilded that you don't want to necessarily public out there. Right. But at least the sender and the receiver can be um, yeah, seen. Can, yeah, all, exactly. Shown elsewhere. So. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do that with uh, request network. So this is all just say. This is our demo. We can set the date for payment for tomorrow. And let's say we're using USD for our pricing, but we actually want to get payment in ETH. Yep. And we go next up. So maybe this is our invoice one. We want, you know, let's say $2 worth. Um, I do want to say, like, let's say we have a special account. I'm just switching my MetaMask account that we have, let's say an account that we use to, let's say, manage all our invoicing. So again, you can have many different accounts linked, linked to Gilded, but I wanna send this invoice from some other account. Um, send an invoice to this payer, which is our client too. Yep. Um, or you yeah, know, the other way around, you, coming from me, right? Yep. Yeah. So create request. And as you can see, my MetaMask automatically pops up to ask me for verification that I want to actually um, interact. Because this, this is also just a small blockchain <laughs> transaction yep. of putting this invoice on, yep. on the blockchain. Yep. So let's see. 
So it might take, yeah, so we just got an email from, from Gilded saying that, hey, somebody sent me an invoice for $2. I can say view and pay invoice. Um, and actually I wanna pay it from the account that actually just, you know, our client view account. So let me just switch to that other, almost like I'm pretending to be the client now, yep. paying this invoice. Uh, let me just reload that for good measure since I switched the account. And I don't know if anyone has kind of built such a, well, it, it just seemed, I was really impressed that you have such a great integration with with the request network. Yeah. It really so the, works so Yeah, the, so the invoicing tool was one of the first tools that we actually built mm -hmm. um, within our system. And as we're building out now this the the accounting side and making that more you know accounting friendly, mm -hmm. we obviously as we're going through this demo, we have invoicing tools in place. So obviously any invoice that you send or even that you receive with Gilded, right. that transaction then goes back into your transaction screen and integrates with all your other crypto transactions. That's amazing. Um, so I might actually look down this, oh, the action view on Etherscan. Um, actually, let's just see view on request. And this kind of gets to my point with saying that once you're using the request network or these other decentralized applications, it's not, um, you know, again, it's not contained within this little, iso or within this isolated application. And this is just like a public URL that anyone yep. can, can see, right? Yep. So this is, Absolutely. and this is on requests, request networks. Um, you know, I mean, they're they're just giving you a little window, almost right. like an explore into yep. the request network. Exactly. But if I can open this up in a new incognito window, um, there's absolutely no login here at all to to view yep. just kind like, of these details, right? Yep. So just, just like yeah, like an explore. Yep. yeah. So that's what it is. So I can see that hey, this two dollar payment, which is 0.012 ETH. And anyway, let's just actually pay this. Uh, accept and pay. Pay that. MetaMask comes up again. Um, I think my computer may be a bit sluggish because of running simultaneously. The, yeah, the, yeah, it's the the it's, it's yeah, it, it, it really is. So. I think it's. I think it's just the the fact that the 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 web, the web share the webinar software is running. Um, obviously, this transaction has to be mined on the blockchain. Um, we can also. Oh, we're actually looking at the request network yep. page. Right. Gotcha. I realized what was different. I was paying it on, but I, I just paid it on the request, yeah, on the request page. App, I yeah. meant to, I meant to actually pay it on yeah. on the Gilded app because you can obviously just pay it over here. Yep. But, my, yeah. my bad. But uh, yeah. So in any case, I was actually wondering because the pop up was I didn't remember seeing that right. other pop up right. before the. To, yeah, so I guess it's still. It'll show, it'll show it. Right. And you didn't show so it should, it should so. just show. Yeah. Just, oh, I think when I scroll up, it will now show it's paid. It should, yes. And there we go. So now this invoice is paid. Um, go back to my invoices. It has that listed. Um, now, I'm actually curious if it's on the activity side yet because. Um, is it this one yeah. or okay. it should be it. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Oh no, that's the one. That's that's right. Yeah, I think I think because I used an account yeah. that I actually haven't added. If so you I, haven't added the account, right? Like, so yeah, which would be a great there. exercise. Um, and I should also point out what what's super cool about um, when you add these accounts. So let's say if I, all right, let's yeah. When, let, when you add it, it'll it'll show. Right. Well, we yeah, can we can show that right now. So this was, I know I used this account, uh, uh, invoice account, I call it. Um, yeah, and I noticed here you do have Bitcoin listed, yes. but again, I guess you're yeah, in the process, Yeah, we're, we're, is, we're, we're getting you ready for launch, so. Nice. Yeah, you guys are really like blasting through this fast. Yeah, and I've also noticed that 
if I set up a completely separate gilded account, like mm -hmm. if I sign up under a new email mm -hmm. and uh, email address name, but if I'm importing the same Ethereum address, Ethereum account, then obviously not just those histories are uh, um, the same under activity, which naturally you, you would expect, but also anything that was done through the request network and the invoicing would show yep, up on both sure. sides, yep. which that again is is like super cool on, on that side that you're, you get to show both. Yeah, I might be yeah, having. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think maybe that was the issue before because I noticed that, that too. That um, I wasn't. Could be by default it only shows yeah, you the, the initial account that you created. You know your gilded account with, but so, and it might also just be. Yeah, I see it there gets it put it. Okay, there we go. Okay, sweet. So. And that's it. Yep. Yeah, and so, I guess that would also explain why when we searched before the stuff that yeah, was under account wasn't. too, yeah. yeah, it wasn't checked. And then um, that would, you, you can know. also switch your uh, amount over here. So if you want to see USD mm -hmm. or your fiat currency, you can Very see cool. the total amount there. Um, and then also, I mean, I looked at, we just looked at this for a second before in terms of which, you know, this is a little beyond the scope of this demo, but using the Enosis multi-sig wallet. So if you're having um, a lot of funds that are controlled by multiple signatures, um, you can actually set up an invoice to be paid by or through a, a, a multi-sig contract. Mm -hmm. So then multiple signers would have to actually okay it. Yeah, and to, especially with us you know, being focused on businesses, that's, yeah. that's key. As Enosis multi-sig wallet will probably be integrated with any businesses that are Going to be holding crypto funds, lots of crypto funds, um, yeah. utilizing crypto. You want to have those, in, you know, those controls in place to make sure that, you know, Bob, the accountant, can't run away with five million dollars of crypto to the Bahamas. Hey, let's let's put some, um, yeah. you know, signatory uh, requests in place so that right. you have multiple, you know, multiple controls over who has access to the transactions. Which is amazing. Yeah, which is a, an an amazing feature of crypto that it's like you know built into the. You know, system itself, you know, through a smart contract that you just have the ability to really ensure, you know, no, there's no way around it that you, to really ensure that multiple people have to give the okay on a particular transaction. Yeah. So that you don't have one bad actor in the company that has the ability to just run off with the funds. Exactly. So, yeah, this is really cool. So, I guess over here, you put in uh, uh, a multi state contract address that you that you know has your funds or that you control. Yep. And then um, it would send, you know, all those people. I guess they can even open up the request. Uh, I know I saw this. Maybe it was on the Gnosis Explorer. Yeah, you it's can see, yep. yeah, it's within Gnosis Explorer where you can see, see all the signers yep, and who exactly. it's waiting for. Exactly. That's super cool. Um, yeah. So I think um, that pretty much, is. Any other thing you want to point out on the app itself? No. Again. Um, once you have all these transactions that are uh, within our nice nice screen here, you have all your wallets showing, you can mm -hmm. take all these transactions currently, you can actually export them. So if you click on tools, uh, you can export uh -huh. them into an Excel or CSV file. So if you, go ahead and, you know, if you want to click one, you can show it, it'll just pop all your transactions within a file yeah. currently. So that. this actually will at least help alleviate the pain of getting all your, your transactions within one place. Mm -hmm. And then being able to go through a list of those transactions to actually take those transactions and put them in your accounting system. And that's Very where cool. again what we're what we're really gonna be solving is the automated the automation of this process, taking all your transactions and recording them within your QuickBooks or Zero accounts. That's fantastic. Yeah, so here here's the download. I just downloaded it as a CSV file and yep. for some reason, I don't know, it opened up my, my uh, developer nice. or like Adam to uh, to look at this. So but yeah, it shows wallet addresses. It's a little, little bulky, but it shows yeah. wallet addresses. Well, that's the Atom formatting. It's, it's totally the wrong software to be looking at this. Yeah. It should actually open up in a spreadsheet. So I could, I could have just switched that to open up in, right. in, uh, right. in, in some, yeah, spreadsheet. So, um, yeah. So let me just turn off the screen share. Wow. Now, now I'm as dizzy as everyone else is. So. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah, any questions? If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Um, yeah, I'm just taking a chat. quick look now. Also, if there was there was a question here on this side, but obviously this uh, this is going to we're going to have this. The recording of this will exist both, I guess, maybe on your your end, on our end as well. So obviously, everyone will have the opportunity to rewatch this at any time. And um, I guess if people have questions about the app, I mean, they, you can send them to me, but I'm sure you can send exactly, them to Exactly, yeah, you can log in. Uh, we have a telephone chat. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, you can do it through there. We also, you can also email us at accounts at Kyoto.finance. Everyone also, we will, uh, you can go on our website and sign up for our beta of our, uh, what's what we're calling basically our crypto data pipeline. Mm -hmm. That's going to be taking all your crypto transactions and again, automatically syncing them into your uh, accounting system. So if you go onto our website, you'll be able to sign up there to be one of the first beta testers. Beta testers will have a chance to play around with the product, give us some valuable mm -hmm. feedback and determine kind of the future of what that product's going to look like. So, um, you know, pretty cool if you're yeah. into that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll be one of those testers as well. Awesome. So, yeah, no, I think it's, it, like you said, a really cool app. I'm really excited and I love the, the request network integration. Um, yeah, so great, uh, sorry, yeah, we're looking at questions here. It looks like great collaboration between Build and Request. Yep, thank you. They're actually uh, one of our, they invested in us, so they're, they're one of our investors as well. So yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, right there with Request. Can you expand on that relationship? Uh, that answers your question. How did you get on with the team personally? Uh, if you're asking about how I got involved in Gilded, I, th I think maybe they mean how, how they how you get on with the request. The request. That we, maybe. I don't know. We, we reached way. out. Uh, the story for our CEO, Gil, he was up here last year in New York City during May when all of the blockchain events were going on, and yeah. uh, had met some request people through there and stayed in contact, and that's basically how Sweet. formed that relationship from there. So, wow, very cool. Okay, so yeah, obviously. Uh, Keep track, sign up for uh, the Gilded app now, and obviously to be a beta tester in the future. You can email me at asksal at blockmatics.io. Um, and obviously follow us out on the Gilded side, yep. on Blockmatics' side. Uh, this will also be posted to our YouTube page, so you can go there, you can see this, this recording of this and all our previous videos, sign up for our newsletter. Um, and you can follow Gilded on Twitter at Gilded Finance. You can follow us on LinkedIn, tag us on LinkedIn, and you can sign up for an account uh, at Gilded, Gilded.Finance online. Uh, reach out to us on Telegram. We're taking all the feedback we can get. So uh, any any input is definitely valuable that you guys have, especially in the CPA accounting industry. I'm a CPA. I know the pain. So uh, you know, bring all your questions to me and let's make this, let's solve this problem. That's what we're out to There's do. There's no question you can't answer. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, we're, we're out here to solve solve the problem that everybody's running into. Well, you know, spending all this time putting your crypto transactions, we want to make crypto more and more adoptable. We're all aboard that train and um, you know, we want everybody to come along for the ride. Sweet. Um, and then likewise on that front too, if there's anything you want to learn about the crypto space, blockchain space, uh, also reach out to us on Blockmatics. We obviously have a uh, big selection of different online courses, about 15 different platforms that we cover. So you go to our blockmatics.io for that. And we do live classes and events regularly in New York. And we also do this in-house at different companies. So if you're at a company and you want to learn something specifically or just generally about blockchain tech, come reach out to us and we uh, do uh, short proof of concepts too. So if you don't really even know how to get started building something with a blockchain, again, check us out, blockmatics.io. Um, thanks again, Joey. This is yeah. a lot of fun. Thanks really so appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great cool. being here. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. Bye.